Hello sports fans and welcome to another edition of After the Whistle. This is our 15th episode and on today's podcast we're going to recap Kingston versus Austin East first round playoff game from last week. We're going to talk Kingston high school basketball which the season got off to a great start with a big W against Cofield. We have a special guest Bryson Bowles that will be on the podcast and we're also going to talk Tennessee, Missouri this Saturday night. Big test for the Vols on the road. This is a W they got to have to become bowl eligible. We're going to talk about that upcoming matchup. And finally, we'll do our shout outs. So we hope that you like and enjoy another edition of After the Whistle. Welcome back to After the Whistle. I'm your co-host Jody Maduski alongside Brad Luxwell, Jeff Huffman. Guys, let's recap Kingston's final game of the season. They took it on the chin. Guys, AE, they're a good ball team. So we kind of thought that might happen, and it did. But, man, great season for the Yellow Jackets. They end the season 7-5. and five. Congratulations to all the seniors that played their last game for the Yellow Jackets. A heck of a season couple of guys, you know, want to give a shout out to. Of course, Trey Schultz played his last game. Diggs has got another uh, year with him, guys, and had a monster season. So uh, uh, they go down, Brad, but uh, they need to keep their heads up because that was a good season for them. Yeah, Jody, it was. Uh, kind of like the last game, we hung with AE for the first half. It's 21 14 at halftime. And uh, the first time we played with them, you know, we took them to the fourth quarter. This time, AE kind of took control in the third quarter. Our defense uh, kind of had a hard time in the third quarter limiting the uh, big plays of AE. But, man, AE's got two studs. That running back and quarterback are both very, very good players and uh, be hard for anybody to stop them. But, like I said, overall, Jody, very good season. Uh, had a good winning streak right there in the middle of the season and made the second round of the playoffs, so nothing to be ashamed of there. And, uh, Huff, you want to talk a little, a little bit about the offense? Yeah. Yeah, Brad, uh, you're right. You and Jody's right. Uh Austin East is a good team, so we knew it was going to be a challenge going in. And they hung for a half, but then uh, a little bit of too much speed over them. Couldn't overcome that. But great season for the Jackets. And offensively, Friday night, um, Elijah Hill got in the end zone again. So what a great season he's had. And also, too, it was cool to see the two seniors go out. Uh, Trey Schultz's last pass was a touchdown to senior Luke Borum who had a touchdown reception on his, his last catch, ended up being a touchdown. And Luke also, good hustle, recovered a fumble in the end zone to get the Kingston's first touchdown Friday night. So it was good to see the offense uh, fight and play hard, and they had some success. So great season, and uh, but nothing to hang their heads low about. Is they went and played, competed hard, made the second round of the playoffs. So good season for the Jackets. And, guys, you know, they do lose quite a bit. I think there's 15 seniors on this team. And uh, some good ones at that. It was a great season. They're going to have a little bit, a little bit of rebuilding to do, Brad. And, and hopefully, some of these, uh, you know, eighth graders coming up can contribute. But it, they're going to be looking at the, you know, the seniors and juniors to step up next year for sure. Yeah, Jody, we do lose quite a bit, but uh, got some good players coming back. Marcus Rose, you know, he'll be back for his senior season. Looking for a big year from him. Uh, you know, Kane Collins will be back as the quarterback. Uh, Offensive line is going to have to be rebuilt a little bit. You lose a couple. Uh, but they got some young guys coming up. And also uh, a couple guys from the freshman class this year, Jody, uh, Austin uh, Edmonds and uh, a couple other kids got in there. So, uh, seed on, you know, sophomore, he got some uh, some carries this year. So, skill-wise, I think we'll be all right if we can rebuild the lines. I think we'll be in good shape. All right, guys, great take on the recap. Uh, that, that'll be the – Final episode, we talk about King football this year. Like I said, 7-5, and five, great season. Uh, guys, now it's time to uh, talk a little basketball, and it's basketball season. So I look forward to talking a lot of basketball here in the future. Welcome back to the show, guys. Let's recap Kingston's 
first victory of the season for high school basketball. They defeated Cofield 71-56. We had four jackets in double figures led by Bryson Bowles, who had 15 points. Guys, great win for the Yellow Jackets to start the season off. It was pretty much out of hand after the first quarter. It's 22 to 5, and I believe it was 46-18 at halftime. Guys, uh, Kingston come out on fire, and they didn't let off the gas and uh, took care of business, and a lot of players got some playing time. Brad, good dub. Yeah, Joe, it is good dub. The uh, thing I liked, the way we shared the ball and passed, uh, very balanced scoring. Uh, like you said, Bryce had 15. I think Harper Neal had 13. Brady Luttrell 11. And Chop uh, with 10. So we had four players in double figures and had some other kids score too. So that was good to see. Uh, you know, we was up by 30 early in the third quarter and Colt put some of the younger guys in and some of the football players that hadn't been practicing very much. So Cofield cut into the lead a little bit, but that game was never in doubt. And uh, like I said, Joe, really, I was proud of the way they shared the ball and passed around. It was you, me and you was there and it, it was really crisp and really sharp. It was nice. And, and that's what you got to have, man. You got to have a balance attack. You get, you, you know, you, you're not going to have one guy score 40 and, and, and be able to win a lot. So it was good to see the guys uh, play the way, as well as they did and, and Huff. Start the season off 1-0. and Yeah, I agree, guys. Uh, always good to start the season off with a win. Uh, Battle of the Yellow Jackets. Kingston comes out victorious. So, you know, we get the upper hand as far as that goes, too. So, it's always nice. But, yeah, no, like you guys said, uh, very balanced scoring, which good team basketball, you like to see that. And that bodes well down the road. You know, good sharing of the basketball. That will lead to good things down the season. And uh, these guys have been playing together for a while. Uh, you throw in Bryce and transfer. It seems like he's gelled with the team. He's played with those guys in uh, travel ball over the year, the summer. So, um, you know, there's some chemistry between all those guys. So, I think you're going to see a lot of that this year. Where, uh, since they're upper class, but now uh, they're going to shine this year. I got a good feeling, that, and that's a good way to get off to a good start this year. Well, Huff, uh, talk about team chemistry. I think that's one of the strengths of the team. We're not the biggest or most athletic team out there, but team chemistry wise and just basketball know-how, I think we're pretty good shape, Joe. Very good basketball IQ. And like you guys said, they got a lot of games under their belt. Uh, you know, so it, it's it's going to be fun to watch. Uh, they're more experienced. And, uh, man, these guys are uh, – they they start off the season playing well, and that's what you like to see. This coming up Saturday, though, guys, it's, it's, it's Hardin Valley, so it's a little bit harder test for them. And this is what you want early in the season to see where this team's going to go. Yeah, absolutely, Joe. Playing a Triple A team, Harden Valley, they're usually a pretty good squad. So we'll see where we stand, and uh, you know, hopefully we win. But even if you lose, that's a good test early in the season. Gets you ready for district play, and uh, gets you ready for the rest of the season. Huh? Yeah, you're right. Um, you you always want you want to win every game if you can. But like you said, um, this is a non-district region game, so uh, it's a higher level competition. So it would be good to see, you know, where you're at. And, these, and playing games like these are going to help you when it comes to playoff time. When you're playing even guys in our region because it's our district, because it's so strong with Alco, Austin East, and Fulton, you know, that's as strong as it gets in state right there for double A. And, so, and, guys, what I like about this bunch is you got Brady Luttrell, you got Harper Neal, and you got Bryson Bowles. Those, go, those three dudes, man, their engines are running 500 500- horsepower at night. They play hard. Their engines are running, and, and they got a lot of aggression, and it's fun to watch those three go at it. And, and uh, I, I think they got a shot this Saturday. I, I really do. Okay, Brad, talk about uh, the Kingston Lady Jackets and their first uh, victory the other night. Yeah, Joe, it was a good game. Uh, I think final score was 70-66, and uh, Coach Kayla Rather, her first game as a Lady Jacket coach, and she gets a dub, so that's always good. And uh, She did a good job, and uh, Colt was over her assisting her. You know, he was going at it too, so I like seeing that. But Lady Jackets are senior heavy. they got six seniors, and uh, so, Jody, they'll be depending on those girls a lot, and uh, I think they should have a pretty good season. They, uh, You know, Emily Thompson and uh, Morgan Griffey, they didn't play last year, but they came back, and they're playing again this year, and they didn't miss a beat. They looked like they hadn't missed a beat at all, so – uh, I look for good things from Lady Jackets. Yeah, they, they looked good the other night. And uh, like you said, senior heavy. So uh, we, we're we looking forward to watching them play this year. They do play Hardin Valley this Saturday as well. So it'll be a good test for them. Guys, good job on that. And uh, we'll be right back. <laughs> MB1's 
Welcome back to After the Whistle. We're pleased to be joined by our special guest, junior number 24 forward slash guard, Bryson Bowles. Bryson, thanks for being on the podcast. Thanks for having me, Jody. Man, talk a little bit about moving to Kingston. You've been playing basketball, working hard this summer, and you guys got a big victory at Coalfield to start the season off. Just talk a little bit about your preparation this summer and the big victory uh, over Coalfield. Uh, yeah, this summer came in. We had a really good summer. We didn't win a lot of games, but we played a lot of good teams close. Uh, Coalfield, they weren't as competitive as I thought they'd be, but we played them good. Had a good start. Got off. Got a win. Got the got the big W. That's all it that that's all it counts. Huff. Yeah, Bryson. Good job getting the first win of the season Friday night. Um, coming to Kingston, what does uh, the people that hadn't seen you play before, what do you bring to the – what's the best part of your game? What what do you provide that you think can give a spark to Kingston this year? Oh, I feel like I can shoot the ball well on the defensive side. I'm good in the help side. I can take charges, and I rebound pretty well. Uh, hey, that's where it's at, defense and rebounding. That's a, that goes a long way to getting wins uh, for a team. So, it's good to see you. Uh, good luck the rest of the season, and uh, go Jackets. Thank you. Brad, what about you? Yeah, Bryson, uh, seems like we've been wanting you to be at Kingston for a long time, so we're happy to have you. And I know you're excited to get to play with all your buddies you played AU with and play tournament ball with, so just kind of talk about that. And, uh, yeah, you're right about the charges, man. You're one of the best charge takers I've ever seen at the high school level, so we're looking forward to you taking a bunch more of those. Uh, yeah, it's, it's like a dream come true playing here with all my friends at Kingston. I've been wanting it for so long, finally getting to come here. It's amazing. Hey, Brad, you made a good point on this. Bryson, talk a little bit about these charges, man. Uh, you've got the gift, man. You get out there. It doesn't matter who's coming down the court. You get in front of them, take the charge. I looked it up in the record books. You only need about three or four more to be in the top ten all time in Kingston history. So, uh, uh, man, we appreciate that. You don't see that a lot. You don't see that happen a whole lot, and you, you like doing it. So uh, I appreciate you doing it. Yeah. One other thing, Bryson, too, I've heard there's an urban legend going around that uh, they're talking about the charges, that uh, you're a big charge taker in practice, too. Is there some truth to that? Uh, Yeah. Just got to move in front of whoever it is, Harper, Colby, any of them. Just take the charge. Hey, I like it. I like it. The little things, man. That's Some of that stuff goes unnoticed, but they're a very big part of the game, man. Good job. Yeah, thank you. Well, let me ask one more thing before we go, and I, I don't want to steal Brad's thunder. I, I'll let you go ahead and ask. Well, I was just going to – uh, Bros, let's talk about with the schedule you got. You know, we got a tough district. We asked Spencer about this uh, last week, but you know, what kind of season you think we might have? I think we, you know, we're junior heavy. We're a little older now, so I think we should have a good season. So, just talk about with the schedule. What kind of season you think we might have? Well, uh, I think we'll be fine out of district. I think we'll get a bunch of wins. There's a bunch of top toss up games in our district, and I think we can win a couple games in our district and get two or three seed. Good deal. Well, I just want to be on the record first to say, you know, uh, if, if you don't make the NBA, which I kind of hope you do, but if you don't, I think from what I hear being around you this summer and most of your life, you may have a career in country music singing. <laughs> Do you ever uh, think about that as a career? A little bit. You're pretty good at it. Thank you. I don't want you to sing tonight, but you're still pretty good at it. Thank you. Well, Bryson, man, thanks for being on the podcast. We appreciate you. Good luck to you this season. Good luck to your team, man. Go out there and play hard. And, and man, do me a favor. Beat out Core Full Ball Seeds. <laughs> Just one of them, please. All right, we'll do. Thanks, Thank man. You. Appreciate you. Go, Jackets. Welcome back to After the Whistle. Guys, let's talk UT football coming up. Big ball game coming up this Saturday night. A lot's on the line, Brad and Huff. We go to Missouri. Guys, I don't understand it, but we're, last I looked, four-point underdogs in the game. Eligibility's on the line, Brad. Yeah, Jody, big game. Uh, we haven't done very well against Missouri the last couple of years. They've blown us out two years in a row, and uh, – so we got to bring some energy, and, and I'm sure we will. We had an off week, which is coming at a perfect time. 
get some guys healed up, and uh, I think we'll come out motivated and play pretty well, Huff. Hey, Huff, I'm going to put you on the spot, man. Who starts a quarterback? <laughs> I think they're going to start Gontano this week. Yeah. I know that's music to your ears, Huff. Yeah, well, hey, I've been critical, but, hey, listen, the last three weeks, I can't – uh, since the Alabama game, I, I can't say anything bad about him. He's helped them win. I mean, and that's all, all we care about. Uh, in all seriousness, though, guys, why change the mojo, though? Why well, don't we start Maurer? And if he's doing well, keep him in there. But if he struggles a little bit, then bring your relief pitcher in and keep doing what you've been doing. Guys, you know I'm big about the mojo, and I agree 100%. I don't, I don't think you change it. We're rolling with it. I mean, you know, give him a couple series and pull the chain if it don't work. I, I, I like the game plan. And, and I agree with both of you guys. I think you should start Maurer and, you know, see how it goes. And if, you know, Maurer gets off to a shaky start, then you bring in Garantano because he's proven the last few games, you know, he's looked good coming off the bench. Yeah, I think I just, I just think he's better coming off the bench that way so he can watch the game for a couple series, get a feel of it, and then come in. And and maybe that's what Pruitt's doing, you know, but because he's keeping all of his – you know, he's keeping it very close to the vest and what's he's doing. You know, he won't tell the media anything. He he come out and said he's made his decision on Monday who's going to be the quarterback, but he's not going to say till Saturday, so. Right. But uh, I don't, I, maybe I'm wrong, but I just got a, a gut feeling that he's going to throw Garantano out there to start this week. But we'll, we'll see. Well, Pruitt said uh, yesterday that uh, two days this week has been the best practices they've had all year, so I liked hearing wow. that. So, uh Hopefully, that will translate to Saturday, Joe. Man, they're rolling, and, you know, I've read a couple stories that the, the players love playing for Pruitt, so maybe the message is getting across, uh, the, the game plan is getting across these guys, and, and uh, yeah, it started off a little rough. If we could have got those first two games, I mean, we're talking about a whole entire different uh, type of team, but um, – well, we, we have a chance to go nine and three if we'd have won those first two, like yeah. we should have. You're in the top 25, and now you're relevant. You know yeah, what I mean? Right. So, uh, guys, it's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. We got to get them this time, man. It's been a long time, and, and we need to take care of business. And they're down. Yeah, uh, if they're down, so they are. They've been struggling a little bit over the last month of the season, so uh, we need to make sure they continue to keep struggling. So, all right, guys, good job on that. Uh, we'll be back with our pick segment. Welcome back to After the Whistle. Now it's time for our student athletes pick segment. We'll start us off. It's Tennessee, Missouri this Saturday night. What do you say? All right, you know, we've been on a little bit of a roll here. Playing good. I'd say we're going to come out on top 28-14. to 28-14. Good pick. Bryson Bowles is in the house. What do you say? Well, Jody, I'm not going to lie to you here. I don't feel good about it. Tennessee on the road at Mizzou. They are rolling. They've won four out of five. Give me Tennessee in a tight one, 28-27. All right. Uh, I'm glad you recovered there a little bit, Bryson. I thought you was going down the wrong path. Hey, what's up, Braden Hardup? What do you say? Doesn't Derek do we play for Missouri? So uh, I'm going to run it up against him. Does he really not play? <laughs> 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 All right, Braden Hardup, what do you say? Derek Dewey is a coach, and I want to whoop him. And so uh, we're going to beat him 21 14. 21 14. Good pick, young man. Brady Luttrell, what do you say, young man? Yeah, Jody, we're on a roll right now. Missouri's struggling bad. I'm going to say 24-10. 24-10, nice pick. Harper Neal's in the house. What do you say, young man? You know, I think the defense has been rolling. I'm going to say Tennessee 24, Missouri 3. 24-3, nice. That'd be a nice outcome. Hey, Mr. Landon Diggs is in the house. What do you say, young man? Uh, we're rolling right now. I'm going to go 27-13, Tennessee. 27-13. All right, we keeping it real on the podcast. We got Mr. James Curry in the house. What do you say? Uh, it's, uh, Missouri, they just they just can't line up, man. They put the special on special teams. They go, <laughs> I, I sp- <laughs> Tennessee, Tennessee's on a roll. I got, I got Tennessee twenty eight nine. Twenty eight to nine. Nice <laughs> pick. Nice pick. All right, Huff, Brad, get in here and. Get us dialed back in a little bit. What do you say, Huff? 
All right, like everybody said, you know, Tennessee's been playing great over the last month of the season. Uh, wanted to finish up strong. Got some guys healthy over the bye. Uh, I think our kicker is going to be a factor this week on the road. Missouri's got a pretty good defense. I think we're going to need him. Four field goals from automatically this week. Tennessee 19, Missouri 6. Hey, uh, Brad. 19 to 6. What's up with that? What do you say? Hey, I'd take it, Jody. But, uh, Jody, I felt good about this game until I saw the opening line come out in Missouri minus 7, which don't make any sense to me since we won four out of five and they lost four in a row. But uh, I'm still going to go with the balls. I'm going to say Tennessee 23, Mizzou 16. Good pick, man. Hey, guys, I'm like most everybody. You know, uh, Tennessee's been playing well. They're rolling. They got a lot on the line. We, we're talking. We're talking bowl matchups in November. When's the last time that happened? Yeah, no so uh, it's Florida uh, bowl with that. If we can win yeah, that. hey, we might even go to Florida and uh, catch a little rays down there, get a little sunburn, whip somebody's tail down there too. But uh, hey, guys, I'm going the big orange. I'm saying 28, Mazulu 14. Okay, guys, let's end our podcast this evening with a couple of shout outs and I have one shout at I'd like to give. So Brad, won't you lead us off? Yeah, Jody, we went to mention this last week, but, uh, had two girls over at Rowan County high signed, uh, scholarship papers, uh, Mackenzie Hosba, Haba, excuse me. She's going to be playing soccer at UTC. Great accomplishment for her. And, uh, Kesney Brown, she's going to be playing softball at Tuscan. So shout outs to both those girls and, if we missed anybody else, that's the only two we saw. If we missed anybody else, we're sorry, but uh, that's the two we know about. Huh? Yeah, congratulations to those student athletes as well. Uh, my shout out goes to Coach Panky, uh, wrapping up the season seven to five, another winning year, uh, getting a playoff win. So that's good to see, and you know, keep the program rolling, um, trying to get it back to back in the old days. You know, we're Kingston winning season after winning season, making deep runs in the playoffs. So it's good to see Coach Banky getting that done. So I'll give him a shout-out this week for job well done. Good job, Coach. Hey, good job on those shout-outs, guys. Congratulations to everyone involved. I'm going to change it up a little bit. I'm going to do a shout-at somebody because, uh, guys, you know I'm approaching 100 years old, and I just saw something in the NFL that I've never seen in my entire life. But – my shout-out goes to Miles Garrett for the Cleveland Browns being just a complete idiot, uh, especially uh, against a rookie quarterback who happens to be on my team that I root for. But, guys, I've never seen that happen before, and the NFL did the right thing. They suspended him for the, indefinitely for the season, including playoffs, if, if those clowns make it. But um, I'm glad to see that the NFL hammered down on him, and, and guys, we, we could make our own – podcast whether he should even play football again but my shout out goes to that clown miles garrett we appreciate everybody listening we hope you like it share it and we'll see you on the radio